Hey YouTube, Logan with Hideaway Homestead here coming to you today with a quick video on willows. I've made videos about willows on my channel and um, some of them have uh, very few views and I don't think a lot of people are going to go back and watch some of those older videos. So I wanted to make one today kind of talking about willows, reason to, reasons to grow willows and you know just their uses and some characteristics about this tree. Now, normally with this uh, strain of hybrid willows that I have, this, this is actually small for a season. We had a horrible drought and had a lot of stunted growth here. These are only like probably eight to maybe a couple of them might be pushing 10 foot tall when normally they're like at least 12 foot and a lot more robust stems. So these here are a little, little on the smaller side um, but there's, after the ones that died and didn't make it, all the ones that didn't make it, there's somewhere around like maybe 150 planted in this plot. And this is a hybrid willow. So there's different types of willow. Um, a lot of them are used for basketry if it's, you know, a colored variety. And uh, there's a lot of willows, like if you're in the southeast, one of the most common ones is the black willow. Some people call it a creek willow. Salix nigra is the scientific name. And it grows everywhere. You can propagate it by cuttings. It is by far one of the easiest trees to make uh, more of by you know just taking a cutting and sticking it in water or in the ground. Um, you can do it just about all year long. If you do it during the summer or spring, you really need to do it in some water or keep those cuttings watered daily and make sure that they're really moist. Uh, this tree has tons of uses. I'm not going to be able to fit all the uses of this tree into one video, but one of the main reasons that I grow it is for fodder. Uh, it's an excellent fodder for my rabbits and for my sheep. It also is really good for making sh living structures. So you can make like little, you know, houses, huts, fences, fences being my number one. Um, you basically just plant stakes and then you weave those stakes together and it makes an extremely strong fence. You have to let it grow, of course. It might take a year or two before it becomes uh, the type of fence that you're needing it to be. But it's definitely a super cheap way to make fence. Um, another thing that it can be used for, even though it may not burn as high of BTUs, is uh, for firewood. You can put these on coppice systems and get some really nice firewood uh, there'll be smaller diameter, you know, somewhere you put it on maybe a two to four year rotation, maybe up to five, and it would uh, produce, you know, sticks that you don't have to split. It uh, dries out really fast. It could be a really nice firewood. You will have to feed your fires more, but it's a wonderfully sustainable way to not have to break your back splitting wood, especially as um, we all get older. Uh, we want to, you know, not have to um, maybe do as strenuous labor. I'm still a big fan of, of, you know, keeping active and working as much as you can, but there's certain things you can definitely do more efficient. I think a coppice system, just going through and cutting the trees at their base every few years and using them for firewood is another excellent use for willows. Um, like I said, I'm not gonna put everything about these in the in the video, but um, you know that's some of the uses. The characteristics of the of this tree is that the majority of them really like water. So if you can plant them somewhere where they're close to a water source, that's one of the best ways um, to grow willow. If you can uh, keep them watered or have the soil where it will retain enough moisture, they'll do fine in other areas that's maybe like not near a pond, a creek, or a river. But uh, yeah, they, they do love water. And that's something I will uh, put in here. Um, I've had a lot of questions on the channel about planting trees near homes. So uh, some of your shade trees, you can plant them like about 10 foot out from your home and then pollard them, which means just cutting them at like, you know, above browse height of an animal. So you can do it at like 10 foot. So that way the, if there's storms or whatever, you don't really run a risk of the tree hitting your house and you put it on a rotation. So that way the tops of the trees are only small branches. That'll shade your house. Uh, willow, I don't think is a necessarily a good species for that because the shade is not a really dense shade. Um, but I wanna say that if you, 
if you plant them close to your house, you can do that. I would be careful with um, foundations. I think there's a little bit of too much of fear with that as far as foundations goes, because there are people that have houses that are you know in forest and there's trees close to their house and a lot of people don't have those issues it can become an issue but a lot of times it's because trees are seeking out water willows will seek out water and so if you're wanting to plant these trees do not do not plant them near a septic system if you can keep it at least 75 feet away from your septic i would say just whatever side of the house or yard that your septic tank is in do not plant any of these willows or poplars for that matter or any other water loving tree near that near that um septic tank because it can clog your clog your fill lines it can you know possibly crack the tank you just never know they're going to seek out that water so you want to keep them away from uh any kind of septic any kind of uh, water runoff where you don't want their roots going so that's just kind of one of the things that i would be careful of uh, growing willow is one of the best things you can do. It's got so many uses. Um, if you don't have animals to, to feed, you can use it for firewood. If you don't need uh, firewood, you can use it for fencing. Um, it's just got so many uses. It'll definitely bring in some pollinators too. One last thing to mention is that in the spring, it produces uh, catkins, you know, and normally it's one of the first things to bloom out. And so excellent feed for the bees when they're first waking up from their winter sleep. Um, I think it would be great to have something like willows and then some other summer flowers that are perennials along with maybe like some goldenrod for the late fall. Um, so you could have forage for your bees during all three seasons that they're going to be producing honey. So yeah, tons of uses. I could go on and on. There's some more things uh, to talk about willow. If there's any interest in um, me going on and talking about a, a, a few more of the uses that I'm personally experienced with uh with this tree um leave it down in the comments i'll certainly make another video talking more about willow and um you know talking about some of the stuff that you can do to help with erosion and water features etc etc uh but we, yeah we'll make some more videos on willow if there's any interest in it if you enjoyed this video or learned anything today, please leave a like and if you've got any questions or comments or want to see a follow-up on this video Please comment down below, and if you haven't subscribed to the channel, go ahead and do so. I appreciate all y'all watching, and we'll see you in the next one.